Howdy, all! Welcome to Adventures of Kendall. Today, we're going to explore the Western Pacific of 1862. This line was the last segment of the Transcontinental Railroad from Sacramento to San Francisco, and I can't wait to show you the story of this wonderful railroad. So let's get going and get on board the Western Pacific of 1862. While the official construction of the Transcontinental Railroad ended at Promontory Summit on May 10, 1869, it really wasn't the end of the Transcontinental Railroad's construction. The portion between Sacramento and San Francisco had to be completed, and that was helped by the Western Pacific Railroad. Not to be confused with the Western Pacific that was established in 1903 and merged with Union Pacific in 1982, this Western Pacific was formed in December of 1862 by a group led by Timothy Dane and including Charles McLaughlin and Peter Donohue, all of whom were associated with the San Francisco and San Jose Railroad. Opened on September 6, 1869, the Western Pacific operated the western portion of the Transcontinental Railroad and operated between Sacramento down to Lathrop, California and westward through Niles Canyon into San Francisco Bay where it ended at Alameda Wharf. Here, passengers can board ferries to the city of San Francisco or ships heading toward destinations on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. Fun fact, the Western Pacific had a nice fleet of 10 locomotives, ranging from William Mason, Baldwin, Norris, and Lancaster built steam locomotives. This includes the following. Norris and Lancaster built locomotive H, also known as the Sonoma, later became Central Pacific 173. It is also the inspiration for Walt Disney's backyard steam locomotive, the Lily Bell. And locomotive G, the Mariposa, also from Norris and Lancaster. It is now on display at Travel Town in its last operating appearance, the Stockton Terminal and Eastern Number no. 1. Check out my episode about Travel Town to learn more about the place. Now that we've learned the history of the Western Pacific connection to the Transcontinental Railroad, let's get going and explore this route together. Our journey begins here in Sacramento, the capital of the state of California. It is also the western terminus of the Central Pacific and the eastern terminus of the Western Pacific. Watch my previous episodes of Old Sacramento and the California State Rail Museum to learn more about this place. Anyway, our journey is off to a great start and we're heading to our first stop of our journey, Lathrop, California. What many people don't know is that the last connection for the Transcontinental Railroad was here in Lathrop, or more specifically, Mossdale. A bridge was built here in 1869 to connect San Francisco with Sacramento. Lathrop was an important junction on the Central Pacific. It connected the Bay Area, the Central Valley, and the Sacramento Rail Lines together. It was named after Leland Stanford's wife's maiden name, Lathrop. The original bridge here at Mosdale was completed by the Western Pacific on September 6, 1869, four months after the Golden Spike Ceremony of the first Transcontinental Railroad at Promontory Summit, Utah. That evening, the first through train from Sacramento passed through on its way to the Alameda Wharf in San Francisco Bay. The current bridge was built in 1942 
and continues to hold up traffic for the Union Pacific as it heads into the Central Valley or heads into the Bay Area while passing through Lathrop, California. Now let's continue on our journey into the Bay Area. Now we will continue on our trek on the Western Pacific through Altamont Pass, whether it's through tunnels or across the plains of the valley until we reach Niles Canyon. Here, the railroad will snake its way through the Niles Canyon along the Alameda Creek until it reaches the Vallejo flour mill near the present day city of Fremont, California. Along the way, it will pass through towns such as Sunol. Here, visitors can actually ride on a section of the old Western Pacific, for this is the eastern terminus of the Niles Canyon Railway. Open on May 21st, 1988. This 9.2 mile railroad travels between Sunol and the town of Niles, and it's a pleasant excursion railroad. The town of Niles is a charming example of a historic railroad town with history all around you. Nice car. We will continue on our train journey right up to the original end of the line, Alameda Terminal. Built in 1864 and operated by the San Francisco and Alameda Railroad, this facility became the West Coast Terminus of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869 with the first through train on the Western Pacific from San Francisco to the shores of the San Francisco Bay on September 6th of that year. And on here, September 6th, 1869, the first train of the newly completed Transcontinental Railroad arrived here in Alameda with three locomotives pulling a long train here on September 6th 1869. The Alameda Terminal served as the western terminus of the Transcontinental Railroad for two months. Then, on November 8, 1869, the Oakland Pier opened, becoming the official western terminus of the Transcontinental Railroad. This new facility improved the operations of long distance passenger trains and short commuter trains within the Bay Area on the Central Pacific Railroad and then later the Southern Pacific Railroad. Finally, in the 1960s, the complex was demolished to make way for an expansion of the growing container ship facilities of the Port of Oakland. Today, the only structure that remains of the Oakland Long Wharf is the S.P. Moe's Switchman's Tower, which was restored and moved to the Middle Harbor Shoreline Park. Now that we've had a great time exploring the route of the 1862 Western Pacific, let's get back on our train and head home. All aboard! I hope you had a great time learning about the Western Pacific of 1862. It was fun exploring the remains of that railroad from Sacramento to Alameda. And we got to see so many impressive feats of that railroad, including the Niles Canyon Railway. Anyway, I hope you're ready for next week's show because we'll be talking about the unspiking ceremony at Promontory Summit, Utah. We'll also learn the aftermath of Promontory along the way. Anyway, if you have a location for us to go on, comment or email down below. We would love to see your suggestions. And also subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We would love to see your faces. Now it's all the time we have here on Adventures of Kendall. See you later folks, and may your gifts bless the world.